Good evening. Sport as a means of development of youth and communities. This is Plain Talk. When we come back, I'll introduce you to some people who need very little introduction in the world of sport. When we come back. Right, so we're back. To my right, he's a pilot. He's the head of the so Southern Warriors Mixed Martial Arts. He is well-known instructor and social media activist now, Kerry Grant. All right, good day, good night. Yeah? He is a former English footballer, Premier League starter, FA Cup. He is a well-known and renowned football coach, Terry Fennick. Thank you, Philip. Right. This guy, is his, he is the chief instructor of Shotokan Karate of TNT. The rest of his resume, maybe we'll get into Brian Chinleon. Thank you. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Deputy political leader of the Progressive Empowerment Party, Tony Defoe. Good evening, Trinidad. Right. So, gentlemen, <laughs> now I tried to get some sport women also to join the panel it was short notice and so part two and part three we will get in we will get others on board and get into the issues that affect our female athletes but to start the conversation sport as a, a means to development of young people can i sir? jump right in okay remember we were speaking off here and i was telling you uh, philip that Sport is such an important part of society, as, and especially in relation to what you just said, young people. Uh, what is important in any sporting discipline is that the quality of the instructor is, must always be above par. And as such, simple things like regardless of the sporting discipline, especially I'm in martial arts, that they have some basic requirements, like fully certificate of good character. Yeah. I don't think if you had a son, you would like to him to, you would like to know that the guy is teaching him was charged for uh, child molestation. No, you want the instructor or the coach to be above reproach. Absolutely. Yeah, and you want Absolutely. standards set for that. Well, well. Do we have standards? Well, I'm coming to that now. It. Let's look at first the effect, as far as kids go, that that instructor in terms of in a perfect in a perfect world we would have a son would have his father as the role model, but we don't live in a perfect world. So sometimes that's not the case. Uh, an instructor in any sporting discipline is looked up to by most of his students and they emulate the instructor as much as possible, right? I was telling Philip of a case in, in karate many years ago in, another, in the USA. There was an instructor that's, he was um, my former instructor he, ha he had put a student to teach some six-year-olds and seven-year-olds karate. And uh, these are six and seven-year-olds, right? And he had, he, the, the young instructor who was teaching had, was competing. So one day he came with his hand bandaged because he got a, a shot blocking on his hand. And he taught the class. The next day, all of these six year and seven years showed up with a white bandage on it because they, they idolized him. They looked up to him. And from that point of view, sport and the responsibility of the person who is teaching. Developing minds, eh? Developing is, is young minds. extremely important. It has nothing to do with the actual yeah. technique delivery, you no, know. No, but it's football or, 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 or jujitsu or, or whatever. There are certain traits that are common that the, the child, you raise that coach or the instructor, raises the child's self-esteem. Absolutely. His confidence. Absolutely. His, even at that age, 
teaches them about integrity. But all three of you coach. <laughs> all three of you coach, and you all coach young people. All three of you, Terry, and football. Well, it's all, for me, it's all about standards. You've hit the nail on the, net, on the head there. These kids, when they come to your clinic, your class, they've got to see a role model, somebody that's delivering quality above them. And somebody they can rely upon getting honesty and integrity and good coaching to make them better. And I think, that unfortunately, what I've seen quite regular here is when one gets in, one coach gets in, then he's best partner and best friend and this one and that one, and he surrounds himself mm. with people of not of the same standard. Mm. So then across the board, you have a knock-on effect that you're, the, you're now not delivering quality. Lowering the standard. Yes. So you're now not delivering your top quality standard to these kids. Mm -hmm. These kids go away and they talk. Mm -hmm. They communicate with each other and they know whether you're good or bad. Now you're talking community level or national level here. Right across the board. So who is responsible for setting that bar? The top people at the, at, the top, top. at the top. At the top. So there should be a vision for sport for the development of young people, for the development of the national sporting yes. agenda. Somebody should so be in charge of that Philip, agenda. what I would say to you, what I've seen on a regular basis in Trinidad and Tobago, and many other places for that, there's no plan set down. People get into positions, president, vice president, so, and there's no plan of action from day one till the end of their term, four or five years, and then it's all gone by in a flash. What happened there? And the kids on the ground are the ones that feel it worse because there isn't a plan and there isn't a way forward. And you squander their opportunity. Correct. Because you have a young... You have, you with have ambition. A, right, but you have, with ambition. you have a window of time for athletes. I mean, I know there are some footballers end of the game like Didier Drogba who came in here kind of late. But generally, you want to sign them up at like Lionel Messi, yep. 10, 11, 12. Yes. In Trinidad and Tobago, let's just talk football as you're, as you're talking that. Would you say, because we produce world-class footballers, we... Fantastic players. Do we... Great talent on the ground. Are we investing enough effort, time, energy, professionalism into the development of our footballers? Not enough for me. That There's very little expertise in positions of coaching and management. So they're not delivering the right messages to these kids, not in my eyes. And that's, you know, we've got some wonderful talent on the islands. And when you look back at Dwight York's, Shaka players, Hesla, all Russell of these top Latter players, yeah. there's still kids of that quality out there, I'm telling you, but they get overlooked because the coaches don't know what they're looking for. They're not digging deep enough into communities to find these gems. And they go on this. Kerry, mixed martial arts. Same problems apply? Same problems apply. Uh, the issues that we would, would, we would see in the mixed martial arts right now, remember mixed martial arts is new to the Caribbean, yes. it's new to Trinidad and Tobago. Mixed martial arts really uh, kind of stormed onto the scene, I would say, in probably 2005, 2006, with Cuff actually having the first set of shows, events back then. But uh, I personally started my training in MMA when I was 18 years old. This was when I was based in the U.S., right? Um, however, returning to Trinidad and uh, starting my own club at a tender young age in 2004, I really wasn't ready for coaching. I, I, I was still an athlete. I was more than just competing in MMA. I was also in, involved in uh, track as well and other different disciplines of sport. But there were a few guys, you know, that saw me competed at judo, judo tournaments, ones that I competed in here. And uh, they saw some videos of my competitions abroad. And they just kept coming, teach us. But I, at, that, uh, at that time, I was very young. You know, I was only 24 years old. And they just and they probably saw something. Now I always knew at some point in time I would I would like to coach. Uh, I wasn't ready for it in my mind. But the way they came at me, two of them ended up at my doorstep. I'll never forget it. And strange enough, I saw one of the guys last night. You know, and he was actually my first student. And that awoken something in me, and it flourished from there. But your club producing champions. We right? have champions. We actually have the most number of champions on the island right now. We have guys with um, championships held in different and weight classes. But mixed martial arts, you think, is a good avenue to channel? Very good avenue. Um, about three years ago, I actually went uh, to the ministry and I told them, listen, the area in which my club is based, we had a lot of problems with the schooling, the schooling environment in that particular community. And I said, this is what we are willing to do. And I'm not looking for money or anything. Let us design a program 
an after school program the kids that get detention or the kids that are suspended instead of just sending them home to the same environment that have created the problem in the, the, problem first, place. In the first place yeah, yeah. send them to us we are Sweat willing to that's exactly i'm not asking for any money mm -hmm. this was me genuinely trying to assist and help my community coming out of of the areas that where you know i have been and the people i grew up with at a, in my early teens and early adolescence today I stand amongst these guys and, and sometimes I feel sad you know because where I am in life they, they're, not, they're not there and you know people would say well Kerry you probably had you know um, a, a different start in life and I, I always would listen to my mother when she said we were all born with a brain unless you were born with some sort of defect we have Equal brain, opportunity. We have yes. equal opportunity. And, 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 and I want to bring Tony Defoe into this because on numerous occasions he's brought up the subject. He spends a lot of time on the ground in the communities and people complain about lack of facilities, lack of opportunities. Yeah. Hearing this, I mean, as an impetus to development, to create a vision for sport that drills down to the ground level, what 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 um, Kerry's talking about here, making it an opportunity for those who might be troubled children. That's real. That's absolutely real. And um, and and you know that's the sense that's across the board with people such as Kerry and and, and his peers. Um, it's, it's about the system in itself not being able to provide and set a proper agenda for the sporting industry. I mean, the sporting industry in Trinidad is a wide wide scope from swimming to football to motorsports to cricket, um, lawn tennis. Uh, there's a host of, of, of uh, sporting that, that we directly can be involved in. And again, it's about developing the minds of the youth outside exactly. of the academic... Uh, but we mash, up the, we mash up the tennis courts and put on Napa. <laughs> Which Do is very true. That? that was the public yeah. tennis courts, remember? And it's, it's so ironic. I actually, in school, was uh, was training uh, with lawn tennis. And, and that's exactly what had happened because the facility that we were training at, it... it went a rot we, 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 we make fat venues we yeah. don't make yeah, sport yeah, yeah. venues yeah, and I would totally agree in my area uh, where I grew up as well we had about three or four basketball courts mm -hmm. we also had two big rugby fields mm -hmm. and there was also the race horse racing track in Gopalans I don't know yes, if you remember yes. that they had the big mm -hmm. rugby fields if anybody ever visited South those days and today there are houses on it and, they, and this is something that we have been seeing happening. They are building communities, but they are not building, they are not providing sporting they're not uh, building facilities. Those are not communities. Well, a well, community, no, I'm saying to you, uh -huh. to, to follow on your point, a community recognizes the needs of the people and Correct. provides for the I needs of the people. I look at Kokorit. I spend a lot of time in that area. About 50,000 people live in Kokorit. If you drive into Kokorit, the, the, the amount of... of anguish that you feel, the squalor, comes from the fact that these young people have nothing. They're in, a, they're in a concrete bowl and they're enclosed and it's coming in at them from all sides. They used to run across the road and down the track into the sea. They were getting involved in fishing and stuff. Now that's closed off to them. Mm -hmm. What do we expect these young people brimming over with with um, hormones? Yeah. All of us remember when we became teenagers. I mean, yeah. But Philip, on that point, uh, I'd like to Direct this to Terry. There's so much I said about they have nothing. And I guess because football is so um so popular in Trinidad. How many people you would say that young young people come to you and you know that they're seeing football as their getting them out of poverty? Yeah, yeah. And their only means because yeah, they escape. look they look at their academic education and say, Boy, well, I'm no Einstein, as the case may be. And, and they're looking towards some sport that they know that they figure they have a talent, whether it's MME, mm -hmm. soccer, karate, mm -hmm. and they figure, look, well, I, you know, I could be great in this thing, and I believe in myself, I th but I just need the correct coach to help you. I need some, I need some direction. Well, I, I, I just think, wait, when you look at football now on the planet, it's the biggest sport. Absolutely. The monies that are generated are huge. So it's not some social pastime as it used to be many years Invest ago. Invest in it. It's now a chance for kids, as you quite rightly said there. Lots of these kids are not academic. But most of the best footballers in the country will come from the backgrounds and communities that are tough and hard to get by. So you've got, and, and I want to bring this to your attention, a couple of things here. Many of these kids have got very young parents. And then parents are being brought up and maybe in gang life and whatever. 
Their knock-on effect to their kids is, do they go the same route, or do they find a sport where they can get out of trouble where they are? Well, who's going to teach those young parents who don't know better? So my second point was going to be, look where we are in Trinidad and Tobago, where we've got four top-quality stadiums nationwide, and they're all in the middle of nowhere, underutilised, don't use anywhere. They're a waste of time, and they're costing government money every year for maintenance. And the maintenance is not being done, so they're dropping her down around us. Can't we make but some I, I, use of it? But I asked, I asked, I said, when you looked at AC Milan and Inter Milan share stadium, the share stadium, the yeah. share stadium yeah. I would have loved, my son is 26 now, but growing up, I mean, they hustle and play football in the shadow of the yeah. national stadium inside the youth center. If you go there on an evening and see the kind of football being played inside and yeah. there on the ground, on hard floor in sneakers, because they can't get access to the, to the grounds, to the stadium. If we have, as you say, and I always wondered, why on a Saturday and a Sunday they don't have two games, three games? Um, Diego Martin playing Maraval and 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 Cure playing Sawa. But, but Philip, not just sport. Open these big stadiums up, these big properties that have got car parking facilities. Trinidad and Tobago at the moment, everybody's got a pop up shop. They're travelling around the country, showing their wares, trying to sell things. Why not turn these stadiums into little hubs around the country? where they can use for not just sport, everything. Manchester United, Old Trafford, five days a week, loans itself out to a college. So they're using all the private boxes but and everything absolutely. around. It's, it's but absolutely. The best. Terry, I, I remember once we were, we, we used, a, a bunch of us used to train a lot. And one of our training, we used to run to the stadium and go inside the stadium and run up and down the stairs, inside the stadium, around the stadium. And we were put out. We were put out and they told us we have to get permission from the Ministry of Sport to run up and down on the stands. What are we going to do to the concrete stands running up and down the stands? And it was getting big. People were, were getting involved in it because the world we were watching, all the new types of the, the, the development in sport now is all outdoor flipping tires, carrying lampposts. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but that's the truth. And, and we just always so late to take advantage. The, the mixed martial arts, I know your son is involved Adam. in that. Uh, have we yet built a purpose-built facility? We have so many athletes involved in it. Do we have a facility anywhere? I actually um, I actually approached, again, the ministry in Marabella at uh, Stadium Mani Ramjohn Mani Ram Stadium. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of open land there. I said, listen, build a facility. It's not going to cost too much. It's basically a warehouse. It's just a roof, a dog. roof, yeah. a roof. That's basically <laughs> it, right? I have a lot of equipment, and you all do. I could donate it today. We already based in Marabella. I said, "Come on, let's get this thing done." Mix martial I show them out. Every night, man, you, because there's also a, a boxing gym mm. in Marabella, Cosmos Boxing Gym, right? And they had a nice bunch of youth. But the gym now is it's it it it's it's, it's it, it, that's correct. It needs it needs uplifting, and it it cannot really house. You know, the, 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 the athletes. It was a shame. I told them, let's build this. It will be a multi-purpose combat sporting yeah. fa facility. So it's more than just MMA. We have boxing. We will have judo. We will have everything. But if you take a move. step back, before, based on what you are saying, right? Um, do you think that the people in Trinidad understand, especially for the youth, their kids, just how important some participation in sport, whether it's football, karate, MME, whatever. I think that it's, uh, well, hear me out. This, the next part of it is, based on what Carrie was saying, that you know you need more facilities and stuff like that. Then the second part of that would be, obviously, uh, if sport has so many benefits, you teach a child to have confidence, really self-esteem, right? Um, teach them, not coordination, cooperation, cooperation skills, right? Yeah. Uh, team building. Yeah, right, and, 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 and enhance, enhance their mood, right? Yeah. No, no, but based on that, if these are all the benefits to be derived from sport Plus in general, right? Yeah. Would you say that? Plus babysitting <laughs> service. People want somewhere for their children to go. No, they want I, somewhere I, to go at the end of the day. I totally yeah. understand where Brian is coming from and what he's trying to get at. Because let's say, for instance, some communities have a culture. So let's just say, for instance, let's take Gulfview, for, for, for instance, or, or a certain part of Palmis, right? No, the majority of those individuals, their families are probably very well off. So their kids attend the higher quality of schools. Those schools, I and can tell you, but not, not the way it should 
Because I tell you some, I have students that are, that train with me, and when I ask them, what do they really, what, how do they project sport in the school? Most of the teachers in those schools will tell you sport is a waste of time. You will not get anywhere doing certain and, sports. There is no money to be made in sport, and that now goes back to the parents because you, I, I have seen it because a, a one parent did ask me before. She said, what my child really going to get out of MMA? I said, D does he have a passion for it? And in front of him, I asked, I said, what do you like about this sport? He said, I believe I could be a champion one day. And I looked at the mom and I said, would you take this opportunity away? She said, but, uh, fire in the, child. the passion. fire, the passion. Yeah. Now, I will tell you something. There was one day I, I woke up, I woke up a morning and I, I, I had a dream. Right, and I, I did a, I did a seminar one day. I was invited by Lockjack, and strange enough, it was two days prior to that, and it was it, it resounded with me. It was there, a voice like it was like a voice telling me, "Listen, the reason why you are successful, Kerry, is because you are doing what you are passionate about. Mm -hmm. You're doing what you love to mm -hmm. do, and it went deeper into." When you are born, we are you know, people say we are all born with a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I thoroughly believe mm -hmm. with all my heart, mm -hmm. we we all know or we feel, we, we, we know it in our beings. You see, up until the age of seven, eight, nine, when something grasps you and you say, Mommy, Daddy, this is what I want to mm -hmm. be. Daddy, I want to be a fire officer. Mommy, I want to be a footballer. I want to be a dancer. Mm -hmm. Parents, because of culture, the way we were brought up, would tell our children, no, that has no money in it. No, I don't want you to do that. I want you to study doctor. Well, right. I want you to study, want okay, you to, but, study to be well, a lawyer. So you, and we steer them away. Yeah, but you're bringing that into the conversation, and I want to say this, right? Because mm -hmm. people will ask, you say that, and people will ask, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Which comes first, an informed electorate or leadership? Because we, in general, seem to have mm. a lack of both. Yeah. We don't have an informed electorate. We, we have what people call low information voters, yeah. and they don't know that they don't know. Yeah. So you can't blame them for not knowing. Then we have professional politicians who get into the field, who get into the job, who get in the post, mm -hmm. who appoint people to the post, <laughs> yeah. who have no idea that they don't know that they don't know. Yeah, yeah. So where do we go? Where do we go? We have a minister of sport that doesn't understand sport. Sport. She was handed the portfolio. As a matter of fact, she, she said she it. She said she... She admitted it yeah, yes, from day one. Now space. look at this. Look at this. I have a friend, Atto Bolan. Yeah. Atto Bolan has a stadium named after him that is in complete disrepair. Yeah. While Atto is training Jamaicans to take the world by storm. Mm -hmm. Brianna Williams. I mean... The girl, yeah, yes. she's fire. She's, she's fire. Yeah, and the Trinidadian athletes have as much fire. And Atto telling me that the 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 one thing Jamaica have going for it is that Trinidadians not taking their sport seriously. Yeah. Because Trinidadians could be giving Jamaica and all the other countries <laughs> real pressure track and field. What we get for our by the way, and we get in gold medals. We get a Kishon Walker that nobody saw coming. I, we, 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 we're fortunate when some of these kids get exposed. No, but we, we're fortunate when some of these kids get exposed internationally because yeah. here there are no support systems. Here there is no plan. Here the Ministry of Sport treats sport like and also run instead of, of, of community building, yeah. human development. But based on what you just said, Philip, why don't you answer your own question in the sense that how informed do you, find, do you think the electorate is? As regards to the benefit With regards sport. to sport, yeah. if you looked at Trinidad and Tobago's voter mm. and over the last 30 years, and we've changed a generation or two, they've been told that politics is war. And politics doesn't have to be war. Politics should be about finding the best for everybody and going forward. In a perfect world, as you said, that do exist. Our electorate now does come of age. They <coughs> jaded. They don't believe in politicians. And the politicians themselves who get into politics listen to most of them. None of them have a view, a vision for the country or the no. people. You have, and I don't want to go down too far into the political realm with this conversation, it's important for but they get are. on platforms and talk utter foolishness of instead, of, instead of when the prime minister was in Belmont. Belmont is what we would refer to as a depressed community. Yep. There are a lot of young people in Belmont that have no hope and no opportunity. They can't go on in and further their education because they've missed steps and there's nobody to right-size them. There are a lot of 
lit illiteracy. So we need to take and make do the best that we have in trade, culture, art, sport. But we have no expression in those things nationally. So all them same politicians are voted in to represent the people in their communities, constituencies. They don't do that, Philip. What they do is they look after themselves. You look across the board, both parties that we play with today are, it's a, you re it's a revolving you door. You can imagine the a other. government in England that don't respect cricket or football I want or to, rugby. I want to, listen, something that I've looked into over the last 18 months, which is absolutely brilliant. Iceland are under snow for seven, eight months of the year. Incredible. They are now competing in international football right across Europe. 500,000 people. 500,000 people. 500,000. Half the population of Gerard. Why? Because they set down a plan over five years. They put synthetic surfaces all around the island. They put top class coaches. You can't be anything less than a B licensed coach in every one of these facilities. So the kids are getting great mentorship, great people behind the scenes working them. And they're now knocking top... They beat England, my God, in the European Championships last time out. And I'm thinking, how the hell did that happen? That is a... Planning. But I, and let me tell you the level of planning, eh? That is a country where at least half the parliament are women. And they make that a law. Yeah. And they've broken the glass ceiling where, where wage disparity is concerned. Women now have to earn as much as men and given opportunities. So they're actually breaking down all the taboos and all the, yes. all the obstacles to progress. And what you get out of that? You get people developing. Once you give people hope and opportunity, Trinidad and Tobago is at one time paradise and a hellhole. We are the most blessed nation in the world True. and the most <laughs> cursed nation on the planet. We have a complete lack of leadership at any level. When I sat down this morning to make a list to call people to talk about sports, that list got so long. I know so many of you all good people, but I wanted people who have a hand on coaching because, because you, you've seen sport from both sides. But now you see the frustration of yourself trying to develop a sport and you see the, the, the frustration, Tony, in, in the communities. I mean, again, we have to always bring it back to this. Community development without sport leaving the children in a, mess. in a mess. In a mess. Because this is why we're having children going into gangs and finding, because idle hands, they... they you know, they're looking for something to do. Yeah. And especially in the environment now where we have a mostly single parent environment, where you have this one parent, whether it be father or mother, holding down two or three jobs just to survive and, and take care of the home for that matter. You don't have auntie, uncle, mommy, grandma around. Extended These, family. No ex extended exactly. Family. So you're talking about children coming from school that have no guidance. No Nobody one home. Exactly. And they are now doing whatever the heck they want to do, finding themselves in places that they should not be. Now, having a, a, a robust sporting sector, or, or at least the opportunity for children to be inserted in these areas, I mean, again, it would keep them occupied. And, and you know, like we, we say, where, especially where education is concerned, as a child growing up, to be able to identify naturally aspiration that a child is born with, as far as whether they're actually academic, whether they're artistic, whether they're a, a sportsman, uh, or, or like working with their hands. But sports it, aids in learning to it. Yes, of course. But sport I, aid I, in left brain, right I, brain. I agree 100% because I, I wanted to add on what uh, Terry was saying. And remember, we had this conversation before where I, I always maintain that sport has a direct correlation with education. Yes. Direct. It belongs and, there. And, and I, I have always said, uh, no, I had uh, I had the opportunity to meet with one of the Jamaican spring coaches about four years ago in Miami. And I can tell you, he said, you know why Jamaica is taking over not just in track and field, not just in football, but in other sporting disciplines right now. Now you see they have a gymnast. They, uh, what the first gymnast just qualified for the uh, Olympics, I think it but is. Jamaica already. had a box, right? oh, I, I was had just about to say that. I was just about to say that. You were talking about Jamaica had a box. Now they have a gymnastics team that is doing well. But the point the man was making, he said, listen, Jamaica realized something. Look what the U.S. have have been doing. Look at what Europeans have been doing and look at what the Asians have been Spain doing. Spain to develop Straight into the schools. Yeah. And not just... Now look at it. They have, like you were saying, they have coaches. 
Right now, in, in high schools in the U.S., you would have a football coach, you would have a track and field coach, you would have a swim coach. You don't have a PE teacher Correct. trying to teach everything. You yeah, have someone yeah. that is... Back, backtrack yeah. that to what Correct. he was saying a couple of minutes ago, which I think is, is very relevant, in that what is it like in England? If you said that, you know, they would tell uh, some, some people, aspiring kids to be want to be a big footballer, they mm. say, forget, forget sport, boy. They have no money in sport. Yeah. Boy. In England. Well, but long, long coming to what's the mindset in particular in the schools for like if whether, whether it's a, a private school in school or for a club or, or they, what, would they say like um, well forget sport you know, you know no, no so money. Things I think they're just trying to get each other to stop playing football to spend some time learning. Incredible. Several years ago, England. Now talking about the money aspect yeah, yeah. of it. Huh? Several years ago, England put eight hundred million pounds in a grassroots community. Wow. 800 million wow. pounds. Halt, yeah. So all of them washed out, terrible, recognising the weather that we have in the UK. Them little parks that we have that mm. surround every community that were always a mess, mm. they've now got synthetic surfaces down, they've got goals in one corner, they've got cricket nets the next corner. They've, they're working on the kids in communities. Mm. So now them communities are playing against other communities in sport, whatever sport discipline that is. And they're bringing kids out of themselves. Terry, mm -hmm. when I see the children in the little hallways, in the little spaces between this wall and that wall, and then I drive past St. Mary's grounds, QRC grounds, Fatima grounds, St. Joseph grounds, and yeah. all the grounds closed. Mm -hmm. what's, the what's the point? Why doesn't the state take over the upkeep of all grounds and let the school have first dibs, first access, set a schedule, but when you're not using it, let the community come and play football? We are developing a West Park savannah, and I'm watching this and I'm raising this issue to now because politics obscures and deteriorates everything in this country. Yeah. We're building a West Park savannah that's turning out to be a political football. And on the extreme right of it, where the largest collection of people live, the people who live in Powder Magazine, yep. they're almost walling it off from them. Wow. So I'm watching to see if what we're building is a West Mooring Savannah yes. as opposed to a West Park Savannah. Because I remember Rafiq Shah wrote a long time ago that if we continue gating our communities, a time will come when the people on the inside of this community do not recognize the people on the outside of the yep. community, and that gate is not going to be strong enough. And that's where we are. So, we Philip, into that. so Philip, that now has got to go right back to the top. It's got to go prime minister, governments, delivering the right things for the people underneath them. We are, you've said it already, there's very few leaders that we've seen. When we see governments turning over, it's one squabble after the next. There's nothing that's been set down in stone. This is what we're going to work on to achieve this. For sport. For a sport. vision for sport. for sport. Forget everything else for now. So You've seen governments come and go. Correct. And besides 20 building years facilities. Been, 20 years and I've not besides seen Besides building change. facilities. I understand the cycling track falling apart, leaking, water. And we spend how much? hundred million dollars. But the thing is, Philip, what you've got to look at here is we have loads of water, loads of heat. One or the other. And it doesn't matter which one we have, them football facilities that we've got, them playing fields, are not good enough. Useless. So if we put synthetic down everywhere with a covering over the top, you can play football. Wrong the clock. You can do yeah, any yeah, sport. Wrong, wrong, wrong the clock. The clock. Yeah. In yeah. Brazil, they, are, they, are, they, they, they lay out football fields like how people, other countries yeah. lay out tennis courts. Yeah. 20 football fields yes. side by side. Uh, and, and, yeah. and everybody, at the end of work, I remember reading the story of Ronaldinho. And he mother said, he in the shower, he have the ball. Mm -hmm. He in his bed, he have the ball. If your child demonstrates a passion or a love for a type of sport, yeah. you as a parent have a responsibility. Correct. I think it's almost child abuse to block the yeah. child. Correct, from that. correct. I, 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 I agree. Yeah. I agree. In on Brazil, it's. I mean, I was take my wife. I was in Brazil for a championships, and I just correct the I just have to look out the window, and it's like about seven in the evening, right? And they probably started early. These kids with bare, bare feet, but the passion is in them. Kicking a tin pan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's a, a football. Mm -hmm. But one of them will probably be a, a superstar you know, because yeah, of that. Yeah. But the thing that's what happened in Cameroon, where we get Samuel Eto from. I mean, the, Correct. The, the, did he drop by his story? He say they used to play football in a piece of land between two highways that had no grass. Hmm. He had no shoes. So you can't tackle him. <laughs> but you see, we, we, our Dwight Yorks that we've had and Shackers and mm -hmm. the top players that we've had certainly in football, 
they're not coming around anymore because of the lack of development on the ground. Right. Where are they? Not just are the they coaching. coaching? It's not just the coaching. It's the facilities. Listen, these kids at Adair, they look at the TV and they see these fabulous Premier League football fields that look pristine every year. And they're wondering, they're looking at their backyard and thinking, why is our fields not as good as that? And it's because uh, we can't maintain anything. Mm. It runs away. The dressing mm. rooms, everything is deteriorating. You put so you, you think this is a really is big deal? If, 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 if you Terry, that is not why. If you put a synthetic It's not that we can't maintain. Terry, we operate like this. Maintainers have no money to steal. $150 million builds the stadium, give it five years, let it collapse, spend $15 million more. That's what we do. Right. So, Philip, my point here is this. You put a synthetic surface down and you get a guarantee, 15 to 25 year guarantee. Which government wants life. that? Unless they get in. Mm. I, it's I, what the kids want. It's I, what, I, what the And it's what it should be. I'm saying that that's what it should be. That's what it should yes. be. How do you get the people to understand that it is the function of government to give them those things? Yes. Well, that no, sport uh, is uh, as important no, as education. No, I, I will we go coaches step, will never get that. I will go a step further. No, I totally understand that aspect of it have any the proper facilities but now let's an, let's ask this question how do we get the individuals like brian myself his son and others that are real coaches within trinidad and tobago to invest to actually know the invest in the development of youth given something of themselves Can, how do we how Gary, do we know Gary, Gary Griffin get, is Gary individuals Griffin. to say, okay, this is not a waste of my time. I wonder that Gary Griffin was supposed to be on this panel because a lot of people don't know her. As brilliant as he is with national security and crime fighting, Gary's first love is sport. Mm -hmm. And Gary had told me when he was Minister of National Security, if he had his way, he'd be the Minister of Sport. <laughs> right. That's what he wanted to right. be because the development of sport. But if you look at all the Ministers of Sport, the closest we got to an adequate Minister of Sport was Anna Roberts, and then he ran off the tracks. Mm -hmm. But the truth of the matter is, social development and management, culture, sport, we pay little regard or respect to those very important community developing aspects. Mm -hmm. We have no concept in our politics that the function of the government is the well-being of the people. Mm -hmm. In England, in Manchester, he's talking about Manchester. Football is so much there. Religion, life. religion. There is, I watched a documentary about the electric company and there is this guy in the electric company and it's a Sunday and they're playing and his job is to wait for the coach's whistle, the last whistle, so he could put more power into the system because everybody's going to turn the kettle on to make a cup of tea. Mm -hmm. That's amazing that football mm -hmm. could dictate the amount yes. of power is in the grid. <laughs> yeah, but based on what you're saying there, there seems to be a bit of a little contradiction in maybe how Trinidadians perceive things because in all fairness to Trinis, when it's a football match or anything, Trin, Trin, I find Trinidadians support their athletes in games. And with, mm -hmm. You know, a game it means play coming out mm -hmm. for Trinidad, even though you think, well, the chances may not be good, they support them. So the love for the game and for sport in general is there. If based on you're saying that it, it don't seem to be uh, that enthusiasm coming out and, and being reflected by those in power. What what, what you said? Because we because the because of the lack of leadership, mm. they've left a void, mm. and the people, all of you and others in in that industry, for want of a better word, have had to approach the alcohol companies. They're the only ones spending money. And the alcohol companies are using our young people to sell alcohol. And nobody's really interested in developing the sport. And it's not going to happen. I, I hear Trinidadians parrot political foolishness mm -hmm. that what the people want is what will happen. Listen, the people, we, the people want carnival and we've destroyed carnival. The people want it. The most... The, the thing that we spend the most, Eric Williams had said, if Trinidadians could spend the amount of effort, time, and money we spend on carnival or anything else, we could put a man on the moon. Eric Williams said that. Well, how we, if you're backtracking, how, I, I, a little bit puzzled there. You know, you said they destroyed carnival. What, what you're referring to? There is no, there is no, there is no more people outside want to see carnival. It's no longer a spectator event. Carnival is insular. What we've turned carnival into, um, moving. All-inclusive fets, 
there's no longer something. To be honest, Brian, I mean, I, I could say this with football. We had a, 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 a competitive international game against Honduras mm -hmm. only last week mm -hmm. at the stadium. We had less than 300 people in the stadium. And that's because this administration, <coughs> because of their incompetence, they don't know the game, they don't know the business of football, so they don't know what to project. They haven't got a plan, so they're stumbling forward, they're losing money, they've, it's a complete mess. So you've got all these kids that I agree with, I love their football, They, whoever they play for, they're jablets here, they're this team, that team, mm. they also look at your Man United, Chelsea's, or whoever. They love their football, but it's being killed here. And, and based on what you're saying, you, you think it's going to have a domino effect on going right back down to the... Trinidad's player. number one we're, MME, two of you all in We're MME. struggling like hell now. If this same administration gets a next term, which comes up next month, it will kill the game. Listen, tr Trinidad's top MMA fighter mm. migrated because of crime. You told me that? He's a trained killer. I mean, <laughs> somebody who is a mixed martial artist. And when he had put out that post on Facebook, remember? That he had to hide below a car. There had gunplay going on around the vehicle. He had stopped to get Crazy. ice or something yeah. for, to go to the beach. Trinidad is no longer a place where people feel safe to invest. If you have a talent, you might be better off going somewhere. I remember a bodybuilder the other day. We heard on the news that he gave up um, representing Trinidad Tobago because he couldn't get support for the things that he needed to buy to live on. We take it for granted. We think that these people want a handout. But that's a problem. A sport is an expensive yes, that's thing. That's dealing with that across is, the board. That is, that is the problem. Not that is the root. the funding that is necessary. The funding is not there. And the reason why the funding is not there because we don't see the potential in what it could be eventually. We want the ready-made product. So let's say we have a guy that was born in the U.S. but he have Trinidad heritage, parentage. And he's doing well, all of a sudden, hey, let's call him back. He's a he's a trainee. Mm -hmm. He's he let him represent us. He's already established. He was getting everything he needed in the US. Mm -hmm. Let's say that one a parent that has it, they, they realize the potential of their child. They put the child outside. He's been in the States or in Europe since the age of twelve or thirteen, developing the whatever sport or sporting discipline that child is passionate about. When that child reaches of age and is now a professional, hey, that's a trainee. Let's bring him back. And then now you see endorsements. Then now you see they try to get behind him. After no, it's after, 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 Absolutely. which is wrong. Yeah. And, 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 and we're going to come back and we're going to follow on. Well, but so many yeah. person that, that has happened to we had the take, athlete. We had to take a yeah. short break. <laughs> yeah. When we come back, we're going to get back into that. Where is the money in sport? Because sport generates hundreds of billions of dollars worldwide. Trinidad and Tobago has dem demonstrably capable athletes in every field of endeavor. Why are we not playing at the level we're supposed to play at? Where's the money? Where's the vision? When we come back. Antel is Trinidad's most reliable and technically experienced ICT company. Providers of quality structured cabling CAT6 data fiber and power cables. We also stock cabling infrastructure basket type cable trays for server rooms and data centers. Antel also installs and maintains video security systems including cameras, alarms and electronic entrance locks for businesses and residential properties. Call Antel 674-1406 or 783-9250. Sale, sale, sale. Boddington & Associates Optical is offering free eye testing along with 50% off all frames and 30% off all lenses. Boddington & Associates Optical, located at number 17, Kearney Savannah Road, Chaguanas, and 11 McBean Road, Coover. Info line 671-5342. Call and book your free eye testing today. Boddington and Associates Optical, helping you see the way.
from the break. And if I could have recorded some of what took place on this table <laughs> while we were at the break, I hope I get that energy back up here because because Brian asked a question to Terry. Terry jumped in and, and, and responded. And we're talking about the same issue. Funding. Which countries are spending money on their athletes and what are you seeing in return? What are you getting? Well, my answer to Brian was several years ago, England... Great Britain put 800 million pounds into grassroots sport that was going right into communities and we are now seeing national size for England football rugby you name it we've got top athletes top everything because we put the time and energy and coaching into all these kids and they're coming through now England's national side that just come out of the World Cup average age of 23 Trinidad and Tobago's national team that failed to get to the World Cup through qualification. Their youngest player in any of the games was 27. Wow. Oh. Right? So that's where we're talking. <clears throat> We've got world champions in Mbappé, 19 world champion with, with France. So kids are coming through. It's not how old you, you are, it's how good you are, and you will see it in your sports. Mm -hmm. And these kids now, the confidence that they're breeding because of the the facilities they've got, the coaches exactly, they've got. exactly, if there is a community support. field for football, every child that learns to like football want to go out and kick ball. Crick, you could tell when it's cricket. Well, I mean, you used to, could have been able to tell when it's cricket season. Because when the game done, everybody outside the road <laughs> playing a win ball game. You know, football done, we outside playing a small goal. Yeah. That's not happening anymore. No, the, the we don't, we don't have anyway. sport yes. in the heart of the community as we used to. But... You still have an answer the question as regards to if you reach England and you said as far as you're concerned, England uh, uh, in terms of inv sport investment yes. and stuff like that, right? Uh, what for a country looking at it, see, what do they see as the the one the time frame that they're gonna get back there? So it's investment, investment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And 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 well, what big benefit they see that it is to the... To well, I just think across the board, what oh. you've got here, using football as an example. Yes. So you've had, you've now got England national teams at 15, 17, under 21s are already world champions. They've already done great things. The bulk of them players that have come through them same three different levels of football are now playing for the national team, get to the semi-finals of the World Cup. And the, and the average age of the team is 23. That's a great starting point for, for the sport. No, but, but, but Terry, we are not going to be able... I mean, we keep expecting a road to Germany to happen. I mean, that was such a fluke. We cannot develop teams to compete against countries like Germany and Argentina, Brazil. The, even the African... I disagree. I even disagree. The, no, but I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying, even the African nations that are spending money and developing the, the yeah. young people... In the absence of that, you are not going to be able to compete. Spending money you and developing young people. We're yeah, not doing that's that what here. Say, we're not doing we, it. We've got quality people around the table here who are great coaches. And how do you get these quality people into different communities so you're bringing the level up nationally? You can't do that without government's help and support to make sure that you've got your maybe five or six regional clinics that your top coaches look after. And there's a program for all of the coaches to stick to, not the kids, the coaches. Absolutely. So you're developing the youngsters so, on the ground. And you must have metrics to measure to see that you're Correct. getting results. And right. the return on the investment that you ask, but I'll tell you what the investment really is. You could take five billion out of the nine billion we spend on national security, and you spend that on sport. You tire those children out on the football field. You <laughs> give them hope and opportunity, and, and you give them the chance. Yeah. And they're not looking to go and, and, and interfere with other people because now they have something you know, you remember. No, you no he doesn't want a big benefit. But, you don't. but, but no, the course. passion that a <laughs> child, yeah. what he's saying. I mean, we, we, we all are a little older in life, but, yeah. but, but you, I'm sure you remember as a young as a young man, mm -hmm. when you have a passion for something, Absolutely. nothing's yeah. stopping yeah. you. Nothing's, yeah. nothing's stopping passion. you. So, yeah. so we, we need to create hope and opportunity in sport especially in the at-risk communities, mm -hmm. in the hotspot communities too. He was talking about the children are coming home to no parents. Yes. Yeah. What are they supposed to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Turn on Synergy TV and learn how to pass a pass and broke out. They'll have absolutely no direction. What are they supposed to do? Who is going, because, because teachers, parents, coaches, 
it's like a relay yeah. of development of these young minds and gives them a chance to maximize their potential what's happening in our country is the opposite of that the children have barely functional schools parents who are absent no coaching yeah and, so, we, and we still have the problem with the culture here where we think academic is above sport eh? academics is about sport no but you know you use the word you use the word culture in the correct way yeah. but everybody in china thinks culture is so yeah, it's <laughs> so 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 and i, and I just want mm -hmm. to qualify that for them yeah. because because and what you're saying is is a fact that if you are not looking at young people in 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 russia when a baby is born they measure their hamstring to see if this child might yeah. have a, yeah. Yeah. china you you need to know because sports as an avenue for development mm -hmm. is a fantastic crucible for community development mm -hmm. and to generate plenty of recognition to your country mm -hmm. to keep your children your young people because the only other thing that could control a mass of young minds say that is the army but what yeah. you're talking about is as regards to when they see f for them to want to be the passion right in every sport then you have to have Apart from good coaches, too, you have to have stars in every sport that they can look up to. Absolutely. Right. I want to be like Absolutely. this person. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that has to be put in place, too. Absolutely. I mean, you literally have to. But you, look have, you have names like Atto Bowler and is, Shaka. There and is, you know. That are world Brian, yeah. now. There are. There are people for them to look up to here. Yeah. Yeah. But then you know what they're hearing from the, from the, from the neighbor yeah. or from the granny or from the dad or yeah. even their mom? Yeah. No, I don't have no time with that. You have to go to school and become a lawyer. You have to go to school and, and become a doctor. Because there's nobody in sport. That's no, correct, game. There's no right, money in sport. For a short and, to, to, to exactly. But so, if parents, I mean, children who have, and somebody mentioned it earlier, children who have, who come from, I think it was you, who come from, from more affluent families, yes. they have support systems that the ordinary education system in the country be privileged to. provide. Exactly. They provide, and, 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 and young Trinbagonians who migrate mm -hmm. find it so easy to develop in sport. And that's who we end up claiming back as Trini. We're not gold, a Trini win a gold medal in this and a Trini win a yeah. bronze in that. But when you check it, they, they, Trinidad had no part to play in, that. in their development. Nothing. Nothing to do with their development. And this is something you've been seeing across the board. Yeah. Across the board. Even with, with athletics, track and field, with football, with certain... Because when you look at so many footballers that they call back from the U.S., there was this one, this young guy the other day, um, I think it was for the last World Cup qualifiers, he was playing for his, one of the North, his North Carolina, or South Carolina. It was a big team, a professional. I, can't, I don't remember his name because I'm really not into football. But I remember reading it on the newspaper and they brought him back. But this boy really didn't live, he didn't spend any kind of time here in Trinidad and Tobago. Look at, let's go back now to, to, to one of my favorite footballers back in the World Cup when we qualified for Germany, um, who was Chris Butchel. Mm -hmm. yeah. From 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 England. Yeah. I mean, by a technicality of yeah, heritage. heritage, you know, understand? He yeah. is now a trainee. You know what I mean? No problem. He helped us get us there. He scored some fantastic goals. I was actually in his stands when he scored that goal against Mexico. I was all over the place. <laughs> 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 <You know? laughs> a big point here, like Harry, is this: you've got across the world these kids that come back from North America, mm -hmm. from Europe, wherever. They're from trained, systems that they're work. Standards mm -hmm. are very high. Mm -hmm. They come back into Trinidad. We've our pro league in Trinidad and Tobago. When we're nearing the end of October, here, haven't kicked the ball all year. Wow, that that looks like national team haven't won a game in fourteen games. We're going downhill, and you can't. We've got players now threatening not to come back for the next international, which is next month against Honduras, because they're fed up. They're fed up because they've had good standards, good coaches, they've had discipline, they've had a plan. Wherever to come they here are. to run off your ankle. Listen, Phil, I, last, only a fortnight ago, these kids came back, these same players, and I was at CIC Grounds with my little football factory academy, and they tried CIC Grounds, got a blank, you can't train here, too much going on. They tried King George V across right. the road, and then they ended. How can that not be organized for your national team? That is wow. insane. Wow. That's that is crazy. insane. That is insane. And again, when you mention Iceland, which has half the population of Trinidad and Tobago, and none of the tropical weather that we have, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
and that they could know because there's a vision and there's a vision and it takes that i mean it's just straying away from sports and i keep using the model of india that pulled itself from the global slum to having the largest middle class on planet earth there are more middle class people in india now than there are people in america europe and canada yeah. 600 million on what on information technology information systems they have more patents in technology than any other country in the world and they started off being the butt of jokes that they were the call center and if you had a call to yeah. microsoft word or something somebody in india answered where they went from there they created more right. engineers they created engineering schools they made sure that there were scholarship scholarships and they pushed people in that direction now they're reaping all of the rewards what is the vision for Trinidad and Tobago in anything? Mm -hmm. I mean, come back to sport. We because sport, we, we are not serious. But we naturally sport. predispose on what I'm telling you. The Progressive Empowerment Party has this vision of councils that guide government, like an activist council. I This this here is the start of a conversation I've been trying to have for a long time. When you have a sporting council of people who are stakeholders in multiples of disciplines that guide the hand of government whose job it is to provide for the people yes. so that the young generations growing up could have something to do. We have a lot of people. I, I watch football teams that I follow, and I know that I, I, when a man is coming to the end of his career, it's almost a next step. He's going to coach. He's going to coach. Where are all our talented footballers? Where are they? I was asking you that just now. Mm. Shaka Hislop is a world brand. Atto Boland is yes. a world brand. Where are our people? Why do we not have people like them at the helm? Why? Because what are they getting they're in compensation? Respected. They're not exactly. getting. They're not. Uh, I like that. They're not being respected. They're, they're not respected. being paid. The system in itself is non-existent yeah, they're, they're. for that to be a reality here presently. Yeah. I mean, you said uh, you said uh, uh, something uh, just now as well, Kerry, uh, where parents uh, say to their children, um, you know, there's no money in that in sports, and and they are absolutely correct. We have not created an environment where our sporting uh, uh, sector of the country can be something of substance where correct. finances are concerned, correct. where money has some correct. level but of worth. Tony, Philip raised the point earlier on. When you've got national security, for argument's sake, with such a big budget, mm -hmm. why can't we tap into that? Because it's the same kids on the street that fall the wrong side yes, of the road. Yes. Why can't we there tap into that? There is in Diego Martin, there is a police club. I think it's Excelsior, is the name, or something like that. And they work in Diego Martin. They work with the children, and they've been there for a long time, and I've known that. And they have this clubhouse now, and all the trouble and at risk youths they come, and they involve themselves with them. I mean, that's just like a nothing at, at what you're talking about. But but Brian, I mean Kerry, you, you, I, I, but I'm sure Brian can remember. We still reaping the fruits of Bruce Lee. Every child growing up in Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. wanted to be a Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee and wanted yeah. to be a martial artist, a black belt, well, or something. They, they used to say that. They used to say the different. Ways. You say that every second. When when those mo Bruce Lee movies came out, every second house in Trinidad had a nunchaku. <laughs> 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 and, so, and somebody's boom sick was missing. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, but, 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 but you know yeah, yeah, that yeah, a yeah. black belt in Trinidad and Tobago was yeah. a thing to yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you get your black belt, yeah. you're proud. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't we have any real competitions that develop that sport and give them champions? You were talking about people need people to look up to. Why are we not generating homegrown champions here? Why we don't have a football league in Trinidad and Tobago using those stadiums? Sure. Why are we not developing inter-community football matches yeah. and allowing all of these corporate um, citizens to invest in sport and give them um, a tax break? Can I be a little bit naughty? <laughs> Let me be a little bit naughty to answer what he's saying because there is no kickback. They, the people who are supposed to invest and put the money in it, they are not seeing a kickback in two years, three years. Because sport development, to, the, to invest and develop sport, you have to invest expecting that, that reward. I would look for that reward in eight years' time. So let's just say this was, someone asked me, strange enough, I put a post on Facebook. It was actually, a com I commented on a post. Someone was discussing the same losses that we experienced for the national football team. I said, listen, if I were the national coach of Trent and Tobago football team, I would stop looking, I would not look towards the next World Cup or the one even after. I would forget eight years. We, we, we're not trying to get to the World Cup for eight years. Let's concentrate on developing 
a new core, a elite team, teenagers come up, have them all training. We, they're doing all the little regional games, whatnot. We develop that talent, but we are not looking to try and qualify for the World Cup. What we are trying to do is build, build back a proper base, a proper. And behind um, that team, another team breeding. Correct, down there. correct. And another team breeding. Correct. Down there. Something like because what not, Barcelona not, does with the, exactly. the youth team. Yeah, and then yeah. when they're big enough now, they get into the senior team, the A team, and they start, you know, that was, that That's was my Messi response. came from. You know what I mean? That's where Messi yeah, came yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. You're you looking do, for remember. a good structured support system. Correct. But that's Correct. what progress is. Track but and feel as well. Track the, and the feel as well. The investment and speed is not right when you, from when you, We're takes, talking about Brianna, yes. who just turned 17. Ato was training her since she was 10. Yes. It's not now. You don't, we, yeah. we want to, as you say, we want to plant a tree today and pick Correct. up some but, but, but Philip, what you've got to say, again, coming back to football, my sport, we've got all the people at the top of football are all part of a technical side. None of them are businessmen. None of them have got a plan going forward. None of them know how to generate monies to support that sport that they love. But is there a football plan? There's no football plan. That's why we're where we are to, at, at this point today. We are competing against Guyana and Grenada. That have plans. <laughs> and and they've got development progress. And they're, they're beating us. They're beating us. And what we, we keep on talking about, a home of football. So what? It's in the middle of nowhere. Them kids from Karanaj that can't afford to travel, they're not going down there to play and train. We've got to have regional, we've got to have places around there so top coaches can look after and then bring the elite players together. They took the Diego Martin field by Bagatel and built a stadium on it. The children didn't need a stadium there. They needed more facilities, they needed more fields, they needed more opportunity. Because at that point when Diego Martin West meets Diego Martin Northeast and Diego Martin Central in one spot, you could have opened that space. So that is absolutely a very important point uh, in terms Facilities of the yeah. facility because, as he said, you know, you have somebody in Carnage. When you're looking, I, I don't have that transport no. money to even reach Chicken down there. Yeah. And, yeah. and then after that, I might be coming up but at you, 11 in the night. Yeah. Not even a bus. But a sweat is in your community. A sweat no. is in your community. It's, it's, you will do it every day. You're seeing it even with the, with the new housing areas, developments that are being established. There are no sporting facilities in the immediate environment district for people to access listen now man we build ghetto communities we just build tracks of housing we don't even take public transportation into account we don't take the most basic of amenities that people need to make a life so when you're talking about sport that must be so low on their developmental radar Why? if i give you a joke True. some some years ago people were complaining there's a little development in, in corinth in san fernando and they listen, they, 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 it, it's, it's very close to Pleasantville. People like, listen, we need, we need something for the youth. Do you know what they build? A playground. Swings, mm -hmm. slides, merry-go-round. But your minister of sports. Yeah. But your minister of sports. I couldn't believe it. Your minister of sports said she knew how to run, hop, and when, jump. When I That's her qualification. When I saw they, they claim down the thing and the, the, you know, the blockade and everything, I tell myself, ah, oh boy, something coming, a basketball court, something coming. You get excited. I get excited. <laughs> Merry go round, swings, <laughs> slide. <laughs> you know, town and country development, they have a part to play to it. Eh? Because in, in, in first world countries, when you go to create a community, when you go to develop 30, 40 townhouses, you need to have in your plans water retention, drainage, but also recreational and extracurricular because you're building a community. Mm -hmm. You're not just building houses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even if it is a green space. Even it's if it is a simple true. green space, people will find ways to play football, play cricket, play whatever they need mm -hmm. to play on that. Mm -hmm. But you have to create space. Correct. So back in 2015, I organized with a big company here in Trinidad, Mapo Gaming Casino, to put down on more of a recreational grounds, complete synthetic across the whole field, incorporating the cricket field in the middle, football field, and a three-lane track that went all the way around the perimeter. Wow. And it was stopped by the Minister of Sport, wow. Brent Sancho at the time. Why? Kickbacks, Why? no kickbacks, man. This is what I'm trying to tell him. you. That's what I'm trying to tell you, man. This, this is what I'm, I, I, I was, that's what I said, I was going to be a little bit naughty. I'm trying to stay no, in those no, 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 aspect and, of it. And, but and I know exactly what I'm saying. I don't saying. want any. Philip, we, we, <laughs> went, we went to the Ministry of Sport and said, look, we are prepared. We've got the funding behind us. I went and spoke to the regional corporation, San Juan Regional Corporation. And 
we are covering the cost of all of this and it's still not our ground we're not taking it off here it's still yours it's still a community ground but it's now going to be a first class community ground with all of your amenities around it can we have your support absolutely ministry of sport absolutely this was the ps and when it got to the minister the minister stopped it now where's your process and on the Trinidad inside? And Tobago, you're hearing it from professionals and I want to say CrossFit. That's what I was trying to remember earlier. CrossFit is a massive sport now in the world and growing. We have gyms. We have a gym culture because of a lack of avenues for people to play other sports. So we go into a gym and even in that gym culture, they're moving more and more away from weights and more and more into rope climbing and tire flipping. And Functional, training. Functional, Functional training. Functional training. Correct. Why isn't the state subsidizing the development of more fitness facilities from the health budget? Because the health budget is paying for the consequences of our lack of yeah, fitness. That's a very good point. That, that's what, you're, what you're saying there. It yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I mean, sense. you would figure that... We've got a health budget. If, if the health care body... You know, <laughs> well, they, they, spend they, spend, <laughs> they spend five billion a year on what? I don't know. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that out. <laughs> no, but sorry, man. Continue. No, you, you're quite correct. Uh, the the point is that if the fitter you, fitter you are, then you would figure that there's no that amount to be spent on healthcare. putting health care and stuff yes. like that into place. But you know what the trick there is? Try right. convincing people. Listen up. <laughs> Trinidad has. You might know that. Trinidad has the highest rate of heart disease in black males in the Western world. Trinidad's diabetes numbers are ridiculous. Trinidad's hypertension numbers are ridiculous. We now have a spike in cancers, especially. Um, there's a type of cancer, and it just slipped my mind. That when you Obesity. Get, Second obesity. in the world per capita. Look at that. Look at obesity that. Obesity in this country. But, but, and, and when you look at that, all of those are symptoms of a nation that's not engaging itself the way it should. We, are, we, we are winning the wrong things. <laughs> As you said, obesity. And if you play on that, do you have any idea when you say by most health and fitness institutions, right? They know what they considered in terms of a percentage of body fat, what is considered obese. You know what? Cool. And that you might, you might if all right. Let me before I answer. Let me just picture this. I, all of you all know Marilyn Monroe, mm-hmm. right? Previous yes. uh, screen guard, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> now very curvaceous. But okay. if I had to make a professional guess as regards to if you were mo- measuring her body fat percentage. I would put Marlin at about 27 to 28 percent. Now here is where you need to right. To, to, so to, Brian, with 30 percent. No, I said Marlin Monroe was yeah, yeah, yeah. 30 percent and over. It's considered to be no, by most when, when I came health and fitness Trinidad institutions. Yeah, ago, so you know what you that means in terms of that high standard. Yeah. Brian, I came plenty of people are obese. January 2000. Oh, and the women were absolutely knockout. The men were all cut. And it was the most complete, fabulous race of people here in Trinidad. And, that's, and you said, I'm going to be staying changed. What year was that? That was 2000. <laughs> 19 years ago. Why do you think I didn't go home? <laughs> 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 so you have seen, you have seen from that perspective. I've seen the change. You've seen a change. From, a business, <laughs> from a business perspective, what he just said is a fact, you know. The, the reason a lot of companies don't like sending um, their people, their professionals, expat to Trinidad, it's because they don't like to leave. To go back. <laughs> they don't like to leave. <laughs> so that, that picture you but described, no. you said, this is a place for you. Fabulous. Anyway, it's before we go down that road too far, <laughs> we're going to bring this to a wrap, and I'm going to ask everybody, I guess I'm going to start with you, <laughs> Kerry, Grant, MMA, give us your closing comments. Oh, um, man. Uh, as much as you want. I, I really love the panel, guys. I look forward to, to having much more of these. Part two, at least. Uh, yeah, at least, at least. And I mean, no. Um, for those out there that are looking on, for me it's about developing, and I'm for me I'm I'm very passionate mm-hmm. about investing in the youth. It's more than just I I understand the importance of having the facilities, but we need more big brothers, big sisters out there that are willing to give up themselves to again, you know, help develop the youth and help strengthen their mind and bring out the, what passion alone cannot create a champion. You know, and they would need that external driving force and that uh, expertise 
and inspiration. And let us be that again. And that 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 is my closing remark. And I would ask governments, whoever's in there, to stand their ground, do more, do better. The kids are the future of this country. If you don't do that, we're going down the chute. Please do more. For me, it would be the screening aspect. I, I still think that the people in charge of the various sporting disciplines, they of themselves must set a standard that more people develop that passion that you referred to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of young kids say, I want to be like Mike. <laughs> you know, that type of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. Tony. Well, fantastic panel. I'm looking forward very much to uh, to have you guys on the show again. Most definitely, I think uh, Trinidad and Tobago uh, is important for you to hear this information being dispensed to you. Um, my take on it would be a greater development uh, within the sporting sector. Uh, much, much more e emphasis where that is concerned and as well as coupling it with uh, uh, the social arm of things as well as the educational arm of things. Very, very important uh, factor there. If anything, this panel demonstrated today is the wealth of knowledge that exists in this country still. If God wants to be a Trini and bless this country, we will get a government that understands that there are people who understand their field, tap into that. Give them the tools responsible, the funding responsible, necessary, and let them do the job. At the end of the day, we need, Kerry said, and it's a fact, you need to go now to the seven-year-olds and the eight-year-olds and start creating a culture of fitness and sport in Trinidad again because it's dying. It's dying. And when this generation of passionate thinking people are no more, what will we have to show for all this potential? Trinidad and Tobago is a country blessed with a wealth of, of capable, creative, talented, naturally able people. What are we doing with it, as usual, taking it for granted? It's conversations like this that we need to be having in this country. Less of the bacchanal, more of the policy programs, ideas, plans that will actually take us somewhere and solve the problems that we have. We will have a part two to this. There are a lot more people that wanted to be on today. We got the sports show on short notice. So we will be doing a part two, a part three, because sport as an avenue to the development of young people and the communities is a massive transformational tool. And we, the people of Trinidad and Tobago, have to understand and embrace this if we want to play as a first world nation. Going forward from here, what we do next is important. This has been Plain Talk. Thank you. All of these pens are yours.